This passage of play closely at normal speed, and imagine you are the umpire. Listen to the commentators. Do you agree or disagree with the decision, and why? These are some of the most contentious decisions in our game. Here it is again. Watch closely as they compete for the mark. Looking for Merrington. King with an illegal spoil. These are some of the most contentious decisions in our game. Lager now runs outside 50. The left foot kick. Looking for Merrington. King with an illegal spoil. These are some of the most contentious decisions in our game, I think. When a player is running it uh, with the flight of the ball, he is really only trying to spoil it. He did appear to take him pretty high, so I think you'd have to lean in uh, favour of the the umpire there. But the I think the in. replay showed, Jared, he, he never really looked at the ball. But who says that's a rule? Yeah, but that's the, that the umpire would view that and think the intent's at the player. Ball's within five metres, you're allowed to take the player out. Merrington can put Carlton back in front, and he puts it through. Obviously, a player's uh, got to be allowed to have a free run at the ball, but... She hasn't looked at the ball. Now, yeah, look, yeah. I'm not disagreeing yeah, with but you when there, you Jared, but When you shepherd a player away, you're never looking at the ball, are you? No, but the umpire will look at it and say the intent is on the player yeah. and not the ball. and if the ball's within five metres, is that a problem? In this passage of play, the Geelong defender spoils an attempted mark by the Carlton forward. The field umpire blows his whistle and indicates time on by raising his arm as he accelerates towards the incident. It is worth noting the umpire's actions as they are indicative of his probable thoughts such as 1. The reason for my whistle blast may possibly be misinterpreted in this case so I'll signal time on to give me a chance to sort the situation out and 2. A minor collision has occurred so sprinting in quickly will mean my close physical presence will help ensure tempers don't flare and I can explain my decision verbally to the players. Note that after blowing the whistle the umpire demonstrates the reason for his decision using a pushing motion with both hands extending in front of his body. This is the signal for illegal interference by way of a push or block. Whilst the commentators discuss the height of the tackle as a reason for the free kick, the umpire has not tapped his hand over his shoulder, which would be the signal for a high tackle or contact. As an umpire, it is important to use the commonly agreed signals to indicate your decisions, but clearly it is just as important for everyone else to pay attention to these signals so they can better understand the reason for decisions that have been made. The commentators make reference to where the player was looking, the direction he was running, the height at which the contact occurred, and the distance from the ball. Actually, none of these are real factors in the umpire's decision in this case, other than some may help to establish intent. The only real factors are, was the defender attempting to mark the ball, and therefore, was the contact permissible or not? Law 15.4 outlines permitted and prohibited physical contact between players. Specifically, Law 15.4.3, Permitted Contact, Part E, states that a player may make contact with another player if such contact is incidental to a marking contest and the player is legitimately marking or attempting to mark the football. However, in this case, it is clear the defender is attempting to spoil the mark and is not attempting to mark the football himself. Also, Law 15.4.5, Prohibited Contact, Part D, states that a player makes prohibited contact with an opposition player if he pushes, bumps or blocks an opposition player who is in the act of marking or attempting to mark the football. Further, Law 15.4.2 outlines shepherding, which is defined as using the body or arm to push, bump or block a. a player not in possession of the football and is no further than 5 metres from it and b. where such contact is not prohibited contact under Law 15.4.5. This may sound a little confusing, but as the defender's actions in this case contravene Law 15.4.5d and are not legitimised by 15.4.3e because the defender was attempting to spoil, not attempting to mark, then the distance of 5 metres in relation to the position of the football is irrelevant. Also, where the defender was looking is irrelevant to a large degree, except where it might help the umpire decide if he was attempting to mark rather than spoil the ball. The defender's intent not to mark is clear by the clenched fist and action of his arm, which would give him no chance of catching the ball for a mark. Incidentally, if the umpire decided the defender was only looking at the player attempting the mark, that is, playing the player and not playing the ball, 
and the collision involved what was, in the umpire's opinion, unreasonable force or unnecessary in the circumstances, then the defender would be guilty of the more serious offence of charging under Law 15.4.4b Part 3 and could be reported in addition to having the free kick awarded against him. Charging can occur at any distance from the football, 15.4.4a and 15.4.4b Part 3 specifically highlights the case of a player attempting to mark the ball. This case is a prime example of the fact that most commentators, who are ex-players rather than ex-umpires, know much less about the rules of the game they played than they think they do. Whilst one of the commentators is clearly wrong in contradicting the umpire's decision, quote, the ball is within five metres, you're allowed to take the player out, even the commentator who is supportive of the umpire's decision does so for the wrong reasons, quote, he never really looked at the ball. Situations like these are testament to the skill of the umpire who has to have an exact knowledge of all the laws and then be able to interpret them in a split second in the context of what he has observed. As a result, positioning oneself to be in the best place to observe an incident is of paramount importance to umpiring any sport.